All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about lists, and this is going to be a lot of fun. So let's dive into the PowerPoint here, and we'll talk about the curriculum first, and then we'll jump into the fun part. So lists are used to store multiple items in a single, single variable. Lists are, are one of the four built-in data types in Python used to store collections of data. The others are tuple, set, and dictionary. All of the all with different qualities and usage. Lists are created using square brackets, okay? List item. List items are ordered, changeable, and allow duplicate values. List items are indexed. The first item has index zero. The second item has index one, etc. okay? Ordered list. When we saw the list, when we say the lists are ordered, it means that the items have a defined order, and that order will not change. If you add new items to a list, the new items will be placed at the end of the list. Changeable list. The list is changeable, meaning that we can change, add, and remove items in a list after it has been created. Okay? Allow duplicates. Since lists are indexed, lists can have items with the same value. List length. To determine how many items a list has, use the len function or length function. For list items, data types. List items can own, can be of any type. Okay? So the type function. From Python's perspective, lists are defined as objects with the data type list. The list constructor. It is also possible to use the list constructor when creating a new list. And finally, Python collections or arrays. There are four collection data types in the Python programming language. List is a collection which is ordered and changeable, allows duplicate members. Tuple is a collection which is ordered and unchangeable, allows duplicate members. Set is a collection which is unordered and unindexed, no duplicate members. Dictionary is a collection which is unordered and changeable, no duplicate members. When choosing a collection type, it is useful to understand the properties of that type. Choosing the right type for a particular data set could mean retention of meaning and it could mean an increase in efficiency or security. So in this section, again, we're gonna talk about lists, but in the upcoming sections, we're gonna cover tuple, we're gonna cover uh, sets, and we're also gonna talk about dictionary. So we're gonna go more in depth on those in a later section, okay? So get excited about that too because like I said, a lot of things in Python are lists, and arrays are completely lists, and I love lists. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. So let's dive into the notebook now. We're going to create a list notebook, and we're going to look at some coding examples. All right, welcome back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a list notebook. So let's do new Python 3 notebook. We're going to use the number 28. Yep, 28. And we're going to label this 28 lists. Okay, so this is a lot of fun. And I'm going to review kind of what I talked about in the PowerPoint. Um, lists are used to store multiple items in a single, single variable. Lists are one of four built-in data types in Python used to store collections of data. The other three are tuple, set, and dictionary, which again, in the upcoming sections, we're going to talk about each one of those in depth so that you get a clear understanding of those because lists are extremely important, variables are extremely important, but also arrays are extremely important in programming in general, okay? So a quick example of a list would be if we type out this list, and for our example, we're gonna call it our list, okay? So we'll do our list equals and we'll do, uh, let's do something fun here. Let's do Windows, let's do Microsoft, and Apple, okay? Just for an example, okay? And then let's print that. So print our list, okay? And I'll run that, and you got Microsoft and Apple, okay? So list items, list items are ordered, ordered changeable, and allow duplicate values, okay? so. Uh, allow duplicates, okay? So, 
since lists are indexed, lists can have items of the same value, okay? And what it's gonna do is this. So if I go to our list, and I do equals, and we do, instead of tech, com well, let's do tech companies. So let's do Google, Facebook, let's do YouTube, even though that's Google, but you get the idea. YouTube, okay, let's do um, Twitter, okay, let's do Google again, just so you can see this example, and then we'll do YouTube, okay? Now, when I print this, what you're going to see is you're going to see duplicates, but it's allowable, it's, it's allowable because each one is a separate value, okay? So what that means is when I index this, um, and when I use the index of zero and one, zero is Google, one is Facebook, two is YouTube, three is Twitter, four is Google, five is YouTube. That's why you're able to make duplicate values. Because sometimes what happens is you need, you need to make duplicate values for different projects and things that you're working on. So it gives you the flexibility that you need in order to really be able to flex your programming muscles, okay? The flexibility is huge, okay? So list items are ordered, changeable, and allow duplicate values, which is what I just showed you. List items are indexed. The first item has zero. The second item has an index of one, and then two, and three, and four, et cetera. Ordered. When we say that lists are ordered, it means that items have, de have a defined order, and that order will not change. If you add new items to a list, the new items will be placed at the end of the list, okay? Changeable. The list is changeable, meaning that we change, add, and remove items in a list after it has been created. Allow duplicates. Since lists are indexed, lists can have items of the same value, okay? List length. To determine how many items a list has, use the length function. So what we would do is in here, instead of just printing our list, we would do length, and then in quotes, we would put the, uh, we'd run that, and it'll tell us how many lists we have. Now, remember, if we had a list with 100 items on it, and you can't even see them all or count them all, that's why you would use the length function. Because what it's going to do is it's going to do all the work for you and say, hey, you got six items in your list. Okay? But if I copy this, Okay, if I copy this, let's see here. I can copy the right thing here. If I copy that, put a comma in here, and then do return, and then do return again. Copy it a couple more times, then I run this. Now I have 30 uh, values in my list instead of six. And all I did was copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Okay, and if I do it again, okay, Let's see what it is now, 35, okay? Now if I hold control, control on the PC and, and hit the right arrow and command on the Mac, I can go to the end of the line here, add a comma and then copy paste, so control V on the PC, command V on the Mac, and then run it again, what happens? I got 47 items, okay? And I just kept going to the right. Now eventually, in a code editor, you would have to, you know, return. But for this example, we want it to go that way so you can see how many items you can add with no issues at all, you know. Um, for example, like if I do this, I add a comma, and you don't have to do this, just, I'm just giving a demonstration. Now I have 71 values in my list, okay? So that's how you can pull that out and say, okay, well, I know what it is. Okay, list items can be of any data type. So strings, integers, and Boolean data types. Okay, so you can do, so we'll do another thing here. We'll do list one equals, and let's do Google, Apple, and uh, Google, Facebook, and YouTube we'll do. Um, so I can do Google, I can do Facebook, if I don't hit return, ah. I can do Facebook, and I can do YouTube, okay? 
and then we can do an integer. So list two equals one, five, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Okay, and then I can do a boolean, which is true, false, true, false. Okay, so list three equals, and we'll do true, true, false. false. Okay, and then you get the idea. So if I run that, it's not going to do anything because we're not printing. But if I print list one, print list two, and then print list three, what do we get? Google, Facebook, YouTube, one, five, eight, ten, twelve, and true, true, false, false. Right? Now, what if we wanted to see the length of these? What would we do? We would just type in length. And add one here, and then I'll run that. And what do we get? I have a length of three. Okay. So there's a lot of different things you can do. That. I'm going to undo that just so that we show the list here. Okay. So a list can contain different data types. A list with strings, integers, and Boolean values. So you can have one with all three. Okay, so we could do our list equals, and then do a string, Google, a number, 59, right? A Boolean, true, okay? And then a number, 35, and then more text or a string, Facebook, okay? And then I could print our list. And when I run that, we get Google 59 true, 35 Facebook, okay? So the other thing you can do is the type function, okay? So from Python's perspective, lists are defined as objects with a data type list, okay? So for example, what is the data type of a list? Okay, so if we wanted to find out what the data type is, we just add that here. We type in type, okay, and then run that, and it will tell us what it is. Class is a list, okay. We can use the list constructor when creating a new list. So using the list constructor to make a list. So what we would do is we would use list, so let's call it our list equals list, okay? And we'll do double there, and then I'm gonna do Google, Facebook, and YouTube. Do double quotes here, YouTube, and then let's do print our list, okay? I run that, we get Google, Facebook, and YouTube. Okay, now I'm going to finish up here with Python collections. So arrays, and arrays are one of my favorite things about programming, okay? Um, there are four collection data types in Python programming language. List is a collection which is ordered and changeable, allows duplicate members, okay? So if you need to be able to have changeable data, then list is a great Python collection for you to use. And it allows duplicate members. So if you need to be able to create duplicates, you can use list. Tuple is a collection which is ordered and unchangeable, okay? So allows duplicate members. So if you don't need to change anything, then tuple is a great way to go. Set is a collection which is unordered and unindexed, un no duplicate members. So it's more restrictive. And then dictionary is a collection which is unordered and changeable, no duplicate members. Okay, so you notice the last two, there's no duplicate members and they're unordered and one's unindexed and one is changeable, okay? Tuple is ordered but it's unchangeable, okay? And then list is ordered and changeable and allows duplicate members. So in an essence, it's a Boolean but it's in a way that some are true, some are false. It gives different, um, variations of what you would need. That's why they have all these different data sets. Because 
what it does is it gives you different options, okay, for different things. So they don't all do the same thing, which is great. So when choosing a, a collection type, it is useful to understand the properties of that type. Choosing the right type for a particular data set could mean retention of meaning and it could mean an increase in efficiency or security. So what does that mean? That means that when you, when you pick out a collection type, make sure it's um, in accordance to your project, okay? Make sure that it, it works with what you're doing. And as long as it does that, then you'll be successful with it, okay? Because trying to change it after the fact is going to be a pain in the neck, um, even when you know what you're doing. Because, for example, list is a collection which is ordered and changeable, allows duplicate members. That is the most flexible of the four because it's ordered and changeable, okay? So that's what you want because it's an order, okay? But if you don't need it to be an order, but you need it to be changed, be changeable, dictionary. But you can't have duplicate members. So this is the list is the ultimate one because it allows complete flexibility. No restrictions, really. The other ones have different restrictions. So it really depends. But we're going to get into each one of these in the upcoming sections. So I'm really excited to talk about those because, again, they're all important. Okay, Collection data types are very important in, in Python. So that is lists. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.